Why, hello there, lovely one. It's me, Helen the Great, and we're going to go through a question that I recently gave my grade 11s in a paper 1 exam. And this question is solving a simultaneous equation, which means we're going to solve for two different variables at the same time. And of course, because they're two variables, we're going to need two equations. Now, these questions are usually found in question 1 or question 2, which means they're meant to be easy. In other words, you're meant to get 100% for it. There are a variety of different ways to do this question, but personally, I prefer to isolate one of the variables and then substitute it into the other equation. So I've rearranged this equation so that it's x is equals to 2 plus y, and I'm just going to call that equation number 1, and this one equation number 2. And the reason why I need to give them names is because I always have to tell my marker what I'm doing. If I don't tell them what I'm doing, sometimes it can be really confusing. And if your marker can't understand what you're doing or where your train of thought was going, I can't actually give you any marks. So what I've done now is everywhere that I've seen an x in the first equation, or <laughs> in equation number 2, I've replaced it with 2 plus y. The next part is where a lot of people are going to go wrong. I'm going to move over to this side to show you why. So many people I see this all the time, think that 2 plus y squared is going to be 4 plus y squared. It drives me bananas, because of course 2 plus y squared is the same as saying 2 plus y times by 2 plus y. And then of course you know you're squaring a binomial, so it's going to be 4 plus 2y plus 2y plus y squared, whoopsie, there we go, which gives us 4 plus 4y plus y squared. And I know it looks better if it's y squared plus 4y plus 4, but at the end of the day it actually doesn't matter. If you wanted to take a shortcut, you can. You can just square the first term to get the 4, Square the last term to get the y squared, but now that middle term is actually when we multiply those two terms together and then we multiply it by 2, we'll get that middle term. So it is possible to take a shortcut. However, shortcuts don't really promote understanding, which is why I recommend that you just multiply it out like you always have and you don't have to remember any tricks. Okay, so we've actually just calculated what this is going to be. I'm just going to put it down. 4 plus 4y plus y squared minus y squared is equals to 24. And that is beautiful because y squared minus y squared gives us nothing. So far easier to solve for y. And I'm just going to do this nice and fast because I know you can follow. You are an intelligent individual and you can get it. Okay, so we've solved for y. And this is another point where people are going to go wrong. They're going to go, okay, I've solved for y, it's done. And they completely forget that we also need to solve for x. So I start the next part of my problem where I say subs y is equals to 5 into, and here's the beautiful part, I get to choose the equation. So which equation do I want to choose? Well obviously that first one is a lot easier, so I'm going to substitute into 1. And that means wherever I see a y in 1, I'm going to replace it with a 5. So that means x is equals to 7. Isn't that beautiful? So my final answer is x is equals to 7, y is equals to 5. Now we need to talk about this a little bit more because the other place you'll see this 
is in some kind of graph question. Now, of course, this isn't a parabola intersecting with a straight line, but if we did have a parabola in, uh, intersecting with a straight line, we would use simultaneous equations to solve for those two points. Then you would come up with an answer like this. You must remember at that point to write it as a coordinate. If you don't write it as a coordinate, you won't get those final marks. However, in this question, it just asks us to solve for x and y simultaneously, and we've done that. In terms of marks, this is a five mark question. You would get a mark for substituting in over there, for there, a method mark for over here, and getting that answer. Now, the other mark is really at the discretion of the marker. Personally, I prefer to give a method mark either for substituting 1 into 2 or substituting y is equals to 5 into 1. And that method mark just tells us that you understand what you're doing. Well, that's it for now. Much love.